Well, I've done a couple videos where I have used different methods for measuring temperature. I've put out here pretty much all the means by which I can measure temperature, and that includes the Amprobe with its Type K thermocouple, as well as a tool that I probably haven't shown too much, a combination temperature probe and infrared thermometer. So what I wanted to do is just to spend a little bit of time discussing what each of these are really used for and what it's important to consider when you're using contact versus non-contact measuring tools. And even beyond that, specifically talking about infrared measurements, whether it be using an infrared thermometer, which is basically like a single pixel camera, or using something like this FLIR something something, the FLIR One Pro. So whether it's a, a single pixel sort of device like this, or one that has many pixels and is measuring a scene that you're taking a picture or a video of to get temperature data on. So let's start with the basic stuff, which is the thermocouples and temperature probes. And so the thermocouples like on this Amprobe, which is basically like a bimetallic material, which is two dissimilar metals. And then between the two dissimilar metals, you get a voltage difference. When you apply a voltage across that, you get a varying impedance as the temperature changes. Now, unfortunately, you can't take these temperature sensors and go and stick them up against something that's metallic because it'll short it out and you'll have an, un an unhappy day. So these are very useful for getting very precise measurements. You can't always use this for measuring temperature in cer certain locations. And if you're trying to get an idea of where a hotspot is, the these can thermocouples can, can prove to be quite challenging because you either have to know what's hot and then kind of go off of that. But if you don't, and it's a kind of an unknown sort of thing, then non-contact temperature measurement becomes much more useful. But this will give you the most precise measurement because it's gonna be on the device or on whatever you're measuring. Unless you can't get right up to it, then, it's, then it may not be as precise. It may be a representation of the temperature as close as you can get to the thing that you want to measure. But as far as accuracy, these are the most accurate. So the next thing is like a temperature probe. And that's what's attached to this Klein I guess it's just called the IR07, which I typically use for air temperature measurements and some liquid measurements as well. I mean, it's using a similar technology that's inside the thermal couple, but it's just put into a probe with very high thermal conductivity. And as you measure, this is measuring the air temperature right now, which is about 77. You can use this to, to get very precise measurements in the areas that you're looking to measure air, liquid, or in a pinch you can, with certain specific locations you're trying to measure, let's say something that's like in a, in a potting compound or something like that, you, you could get it into a solid and be able to get some kind of measurement off of that. These are great when you can actually get to the thing and actually either in the air, the liquid, or a solid measure directly into the, the thing or attach something, like, like with the thermocouple, attach it to the thing you want to measure. But there are a lot of situations where you can't do that, nor do you want to spend a whole bunch of time wiring up a bunch of thermocouples just to get an idea of what the temperature is. So the things that come next, actually this is gonna be part of the next piece, is also infrared. There's two key pieces of information that I find very useful to keep in mind when talking about infrared thermography, and that's the em emissivity of the object you're trying to measure the temperature on, and focal distance. Oh, and I guess the camera settings too, which are talking about a, a camera, but we'll put the camera aside for a moment and just talk about emissivity and focal distance. Now, emissivity pertains to how much the particular surface that you're looking to measure temperature on, let's say we're trying to measure the temperature on this USB-C adapter. You have to look at this, the material and know what the material's capability to radiate heat out rather than say reflect it uh, or whether it's not going to be very um, it's not going to radiate and not be a very 
uh, indicative of either situation, which is like glass. Glass can be reflective, but also you could probably get some infrared to go through it and you might catch something on the other side of the glass. So that's where you can have a potentially highly reflective and very low emissive material. But for the sake of emissivity, this is like an anodized finished aluminum. So the emissivity is pretty high, but if you put this foil tape over it, you can see that there's a lot of light being reflected back from it. This would be a highly reflective surface and you wouldn't want to be trying to take measurements off of this because what you'd get instead is a reflection of something somewhere else as opposed to the actual temperature you're looking to get. And most infrared thermometers have an ability to set the emissivity. You typically see it look like this E and then it'll have a, some, some number that's between zero and one. Generally, most things are preset to 0.95 and that's generally good, but you might come into situations where you need to look at a material that you're trying to get a temperature of and it's going to be less than 0.95 and you need to then go in and change the settings to reduce that emissivity down to whatever is appropriate for the, the material you're trying to measure. There are charts and tables that have data to help guide you to find the right emissivity value to set your thermometer to when you're measuring things that have lower emissivity. Now some things may not have the ability to change the emissivity value on them at all. Now this thing I just was showing as a temperature probe, but on the other end of it, it's got an infrared thermometer, but it doesn't have variable emissivity. It has a fixed emissivity at 0.95. So I press this and hold it down, the infrared will come on and it'll give me some temperature that it's measuring with an emissivity fixed at 0.95. What you can do if you have something like this where you can't change the emissivity is that you change the material you're trying to get a temperature of to something that will work for the tool that you have. Typically what you'll see is I'll put electrical tape on something that's likely has a high emissivity value and when I place it on there it helps. The electrical tape for example has basically an emissivity of uh, 1, 1 1.0. So it's much more representative than say something that is reflective like this foil tape where you're gonna get an emissivity of probably close to zero because it's all gonna be reflected away. So that's one way to, to resolve measuring something with a infrared thermometer that doesn't have variable emissivity. Uh, if you still can't get to the place you wanna to get to and modify it so that you can get a appropriate material for reference to measure with a thermometer that doesn't have variable emissivity, then you might wanna invest in one because they're pretty inexpensive and it will help you get a more accurate temperature. If that's not possible, then maybe it's time to consider perhaps a thermocouple or something like that with super glue or something so that you can, you can attach it and make sure that it's not contacting something that's conductive. Things to consider with emissivity. The other big thing with non-contact temperature measurement is focal distance. And I've seen a lot of videos of people taking basically an infrared thermometer like this one and bringing it very close to something that they're trying to measure, thinking that they're getting right on the spot of something. Like if I'm trying to measure, say, the tip of this screwdriver and I bring the infrared thermometer really close to it, I might think I'm getting really close to it, but if I look at the aligning dots, well, the closer I get, the wider the circle gets. So I'm not actually getting right on that point like I thought I was. If I back up to now almost to the height of where the camera's at, about maybe two feet away, then I'm right on the point that I'm looking to get. Now many guns have this distance to spot size located right on the side to help you guide you to indicate what the minimum spot size and then what the maximum spot size would be. So if I'm looking at something really far away, it's eventually just gonna give me a spot size that's I'd saying 50 millimeters, so that's five centimeters at 70 centimeters away. So actually I think as you keep going, yeah, that keeps getting larger and larger but it gives you a ratio of this one's 16 to one distance to spot size to help you get an idea of where you're at and what you're actually measuring. So if you're looking at something like this is a hot spot, but there's a lot of cool things around it. If you're too close, you're gonna get an average of all of that because this is one pixel. In this gun, there's one pixel that's measuring that temperature in that circle. So it's gonna average all the things that it sees there and it may not actually give you a good representative temperature. Now some of the less expensive ones like this one, well this one's actually more expensive but it, it's because it has a probe and an infrared thermometer on it, but they still include on the back here a, a distance to spot size and they tell you that it's 8 to 1. It's a little bit more vague so you got to do a little more work to kind of figure out what's going on, but basically I know when I'm measuring something with this one, which only has a single dot, 
that the closer you get, the more you're not getting <laughs> the, uh, the temperature that you're looking for. So you need to make sure that you're at the, you know, an appropriate distance to get the spot size that you're looking for to get an accurate measurement. Be conscious of focal distance when it comes to these infrared thermometers and know that likely the thing that's gonna get you a very close measurement on a specific thing you want is gonna be actually farther away than bringing the camera really close. That's focal distance. The last thing I wanna talk about is involving camera settings. There are videos out there that I've seen where someone wants to demonstrate like how hot something is and they're like, oh my goodness, look how hot this is compared to its surrounding. So I'm looking at a battery pack here. This is the trusty PowerCore Plus and it's charging the camera right now. This is not really warm at all. It's pretty close to fully charged. But if I bring the camera over it, you'll see that it like it looks it lights up, like it's really bright. And you might think, "Oh no, that's that's really hot. That's might be dangerous." But it's really not. It's just a few degrees warmer than the surrounding environment. So what I find very useful to do, especially if you're showing this, you're going to uh, show it in a video is that you go to the manual mode, get, get a visualization of, of what the temperatures that you're seeing, and then you expand the range out if the software that you use for your particular camera supports it. And so this one does. So you, I can go and say, well, uh, actually, let's expand the range out by 10 degrees in each direction. So let's, let's go to 40 on this side. Oops, 40.0 and 15.0. So we got about a 25 degrees Celsius window in, in the color range. And while the color range seems like it's not particularly vibrant, like it's a pretty shallow gradient between the 15 to 40, if I come back out here and look at this thing again, you can see that it's not quite as intense as it once was. And yet you can see that the temperature actually is pretty close to the ambient. Uh, let me get one over on the bench here, one over here. That the three pointers that I've got that are not on the battery are hovering around 24.5. And the USB connector is definitely warmer, but only by a couple of degrees. So the more you adjust this, you can either overemphasize the perceived temperature difference by making it a very shallow range and going like, oh look, it's outside that range. But what it's better to do, I feel, is to extend that range out to what you think you're gonna be seeing, plus a little bit on either side, and manually set it up, and then you'll get a much better, more representative view of what the temperature is in the scene. And I think that's it. I think that's a, just an introduction into the things that I've learned through working in a lab environment for many years, and also just playing around with things here as I'm doing testing for the for the channel and for, for my day job, <laughs> honestly. It's just something to keep in mind is as these things become less expensive and these things are just very inexpensive now that we're using these tools like any other tool. You use the tool correctly and misusing a tool can give you information that looks valid. Like I can get a temperature on here that is a number but it may not be representative to what I'm actually measuring. And especially with these cameras, you can get a visual representation or a measurement that looks valid, like really hot or really cold, but it's not actually representative to what it, you're actually seeing. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.